There has been countless updates being dropped in the Figmaverse today, including a studio uplift from everyone's favorite Figma teacher, Mizco. Now go ahead, take a look and embrace yourself in the brand new studio. Let me know in the comments below, do you like it? Do you hate it? Is it too professional for Mizco? No microphone over here. As you can see, it's all up here. I've got more room now. Whoa. I've also been told it makes me look younger. It's not like I look young enough already, but uh, back to the main topic. It's about Figma, Figma prototypes today. So let's dive in and let me show you guys what are some of those new meticulous updates that Figma has dropped for the new prototyping feature. So as you can see over here on my Figma screen, we have three different flows and I'm gonna walk you through each one and explain to you how this new update affects your prototypes. Could this be human joke number 663? Let's take a look at this scenario over here. We have a screen for the Ethereum cryptocurrency token, a dedicated like about page with a bit of a chart. If I hit buy, it takes me to a buy screen. If I hit back, it takes me back to the previous screen. So let's go ahead and preview this prototype. Very simple, okay? So as you can see, I scroll further down, takes me down to the bottom. And if I want to hit buy, it takes me to the buy screen. And if I hit back, it takes me back to the previous screen, but it scrolls me up to the top. So that is the native behavior of Figma previously. When we used to prototype, when you go back, it would always take you back to the top of that screen. So if you were doing any user testing or you're testing the designs, your prototypes didn't feel real because of this nuanced experience. In a real app, it normally will take you to the part of the screen where you had stopped scrolling. So what we can do now is if you go over to your prototype and when you go ahead and select the back button, the prototyping link from the back button, you can actually go ahead and tick and untick, sorry, reset scroll position. So I've gone ahead and ticked it just to showcase to you what was previously happening in Figma. Now we have access to this thing called state management, which allows us to manage the different states of pages and also interactive components within Figma. So if I go ahead and uncheck that, and I go ahead and play this prototype, you'll notice that if I scroll all the way down and I hit buy, and then if I go ahead and hit back, it actually takes me back to the exact spot from where I stopped scrolling. So that is the power of this new state management in prototypes where you can turn on or off the ability to reset the scroll position or the component state. So that is about scroll position. Let's move on to the second example where I'll talk to you about or show you component properties. Here we have a very basic screen, a profile screen, if you will. So welcome back, Mizco, general preferences and the sign up button, purely for an example. Now, as you can see in this menu item, we have a menu item that has a toggle and then also the ability to turn off and on the description. So the way that I've structured this component is that we have a component over here for the toggle. It's actually an interactive component and it's being pulled through into a larger component set called list menu. Now, inside this list menu, intended behavior is that we can turn the toggle on and off and we can also toggle the description on and off, okay? So previously in Figma, if I go ahead and preview this to you, Previously in Figma, what happened was you could achieve something quite similar, but this would happen. You can toggle this on and off. And then as I would toggle this interactive component and I collapse it, it tends to not remember or have the ability to remember the state of the interactive component. And then these components tend to live in their own little worlds. And as you can see, they sort of don't really work well with each other. And they felt a little bit glitchy because if you go collapse, it sort of resets the toggle as well. So now with the new update, we can go back. I can go over to my list menu and select the prototyping links. I can go and uncheck the reset component state. We don't want to reset the component state, right? So go ahead and turn that off. And now because we have the capabilities of tapping into state management, if I preview this, if I go ahead and turn this toggle on, uncollapse the description, uncollapse it, sorry, collapse it, you can see that it does not affect the other interactive component. Why? Because Figma has now implemented state management for prototyping. All these individual elements now somewhat live on their own. They are living, breathing creatures. 
in all parts of the world, living alone, lonely, and all by themselves. I don't know if that's a good thing, but it makes prototyping much more realistic. So I assume it's a good thing. Now, over onto the third example. As you can see, we have the buy screen. And what happens is if I hit the buy button, it will take me to a separate screen where we pull through an interactive component where it will go from 0% loading to 100%. And then once it hits a 100%, the done button appears. So let's go ahead and preview the prototype. And this is what happened previously where state management did not exist. So this was what happened when you would prototype something in Figma without state management. You would hit buy BTC, you have this interactive component do all the loading, beautiful loading, you would hit done. And then if you wanted to go again and buy more BTC, you would notice that the interactive component doesn't actually start at 0%, it simply jumps straight to the end because you have to remember Figma didn't have state management before. So because that interactive component has already run, it doesn't reset. So if we go back to Figma, and if I go ahead and make this button, the link from this button, and I go and reset the component state, right? And I go ahead and preview this prototype, and I hit buy BTC again. And if I was actually buying BTC, I would be so rich that I would probably have 10 YouTube channels. And I would just talk about money, I'll talk about UX design, I'll talk about cycling, I'll talk about everything. I'd have 10 YouTube channels, but I don't. This is just a prototype. So if I hit buy BTC, it will start at 0%, it will go to 100, and as it completes, the done button will appear. I hit done, takes me back to the screen, and if I hit buy BTC again, it actually goes ahead and resets the interactive component, right? So it starts at zero again, and it goes back to 100. We'll do it once more by BTC. It goes from zero all the way to 100. And let's go ahead and take a look at the configurations so you truly understand why that happens again. On the buy BTC button, clicking onto the prototyping link, you can see that under the state management, we can go ahead and force this interactive component, this one, as because we are going to this screen, it's selecting this interactive component and we are asking it to reset the component state. So hopefully this gives you a better understanding of how this new update can make your prototypes more realistic and more premium and more real. So that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to gently smash that like button, subscribe for the Die Hard fans. And once again, let me know in the comments, do you like the new studio? With that said, if you want to continue learning, check out this video and I will see you in another video very soon. Whoa.